And I get sad every single day when I look at the future of Africa and Ghana. It looks as if we have cursed leadership. It looks like God gave us leadership that are shortchanged. I have good friends in Mauritius, in Monaco, in Switzerland, and when you talk to them, they always tell you that most of your political leaders, they bring their money here to save here. Some of them even don't come back to trade them. So there's a lot of capital flight going in there. And Eric, when you get a chance to work with the white people, they're not intelligent than us. They're not smarter than us. They are not courageous than They are no more risk-taking than us. It's a matter of the hearts. And I feel so sad. I, when you invited me here today for this great opportunity, I took the pain to research around Honorable Defense Minister, Honorable uh, Nitiu. Dominic Nitiu. Yes, and how he got to Parliament in the year 2004 through by election. At that time, he was the youngest in Parliament. Exactly, in Parliament. And if you look at his constituency, he shouldn't be championing things of this nature. He should go back and reflect on what the people of Bimbele really do want. Poor road network, poor water, lack of education, unemployment. He has the largest peasant farmer base as part of the northern region in his constituency, and most of them don't have access to one village, one dam. These are the things that should take center stage of his thought and his preoccupation. Rather, he, he's, he's here championing about private jet that is for solid few. And I guess sad. You see, if you look at the trajectory of the political history of Ghana, 66, 72, 79, 81, the thing that led to coup d'etat, we are witnessing them today. Because when the masses get to realize that a few class of political oligarchy have access to flamboyant lifestyle, they have private jet, they are living in mansions, they have fat allowances, they become peeved. And this, this is how in Guinea, in Mali, could the do happen?